This is Hannibal here from the Hannibal TV dot com and today on the great north wrestling podcast i have a world renowned women's athlete finally going to make her great north wrestling debut this saturday night in a couple days february 29th in smith falls ontario and jessica black the current great north wrestling women's champion is going to have probably by far the toughest opponent she has faced yet She's held the title over a year now, and she's going up against you. So, how are you doing today to start this? I'm I'm really good. Just had a good training, and I'm uh, I'm ready for Jessica Black. Your arms are looking very muscular. Yeah, we got a pretty much. <laughs> you it know you're tough with a, but... with a championship on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you've held a lot of titles for for a fan that might not uh, be familiar with your work. Could you just go into some of the many accomplishments too much to actually say in a in a short interview but some of the big ones um i uh i have actually five main championship like the male championship to uh as a total um one of them being the nspw championship one of the biggest promotion in quebec i was also the ccw iron man champion uh, i beat kevin steen for it um, I was the, I am still the longest shine wrestling champion, uh, longest reigning shine champion. Uh, besides that, I was a tag team champion, a cruiserweight champion, a women's champion. Um, I think I have over 15 championships, if maybe more. Yeah. And I know you have several viral matches on YouTube as well. So you're a big hit on the internet, but like some other people I know, for whatever reason, no major company ever gave you a chance. Lots of like very reputable companies, but for whatever reason, Impact, not that Impact is major anymore, but AEW, WWE, Ring of Honor, for whatever reason, despite all your accomplishments and experience, um, why do you think that is? There's different reason why sometimes it's it's a, the age. A lot of people think I have a very a violent style of wrestling that might not be the best thing for TV. Uh, although right now things are changing, you see a lot more different styles. So um, I don't know what could the future bring, but at least I know from when I started to the recent years, my style was it, it more like a Japanese kind of style that's not necessarily TV style. And it's about being what they need at that very moment. So I haven't been that person to fill that specific role they're looking for at that moment. But, hey, we never know. Um, a few years ago, I would have said, like, right now I'm way too old. But they've been hiring people of my age. Age is not, like, a major factor anymore for not hiring someone. So, uh, I'm, I mean, things are changing for the better in wrestling in general. So who knows? <laughs> And you've been wrestling a long time. I remember the first time I saw you in the ring, I was still in high school and it was in Alexandria, Ontario for one of Jacques Rougeau's events. I think you were oh, with uh, Tiger Jackson or something in that night. But when did you exactly start? It's been forever. Um, my first match is June 20th, 1997. So in this June, it will be 24 years that I've been wrestling. So yes, it, it's been a long time. <laughs> and you started when you were like a teenager, right? Yeah, I was 17. Wow. How has the business changed over the years? Um, like I said, things got better. Uh, meaning that, uh, back then, especially for a woman, it was really hard to be taken seriously. We were more of an attraction now, not only we are part of the show as equals, but we also have our own shows. There's a lot of uh, all women promotion, all women shows. Um, it's it's a lot uh, easier to be um, seen as an athlete, not just a woman wrestler, but as an athlete. Um, we have longer matches. We have more uh like so much more liberties when it comes to what we can do in the ring, um, um, uh, different types of matches, uh, intergenders a lot uh, easier for women back then. I, I remember it was so hard to be in the ring with someone like 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 a, a, a guy, like a man and a woman, especially in Ontario. I had to fight the government for that to happen because it was illegal with the athletic commission. So today. 
uh, women can fight men, women, uh, anybody. And, um, yeah, we're like part of the show as, as equals, which is the big, big difference. And you had a match, I think it was last week or the week before with Nyla Rose, mm -hmm. who is another, I guess, trailblazer in the women's wrestling movement. The first, uh, transgender mm -hmm. women's champion in a major company how was that match and and what are your thoughts you're a very strong girl you're not like 124 <laughs> pound girl so i could understand like you fought men like my size you could go toe to toe with someone that size but i can understand that maybe some of the smaller women uh may have had issues with with uh Someone like Nyla getting in the ring with them. Like now, I, I love Nyla Rose. Not only she is a uh, great, so she's very good in the ring. She wants to learn. She's very respectful. She, um, she's a great human being. She's one of the funniest people I've ever met. She's always joking, always smiling. She brings a good energy to a back, like a backstage. She's she's good to have around. And working with her was for me was was so fun and. I mean, I, I don't think she's been thrown around the way she was with me, uh, taking German suplexes and all that stuff. But uh, I really, really enjoy that match, and I, I really hope we can work again in the future. Is there anyone that's in WWE right now that is someone that you would really like to work with? You fought the top girl in AEW. Um, I've... I've never, like, there's a lot of girls in WWE right now that I did wrestle. I was actually a uh, tag team partner of Asuka. So we had a match. I also wrestled Mia Yim, Nikki Cross, Mercedes Martinez, um, Sarah uh, Logan. Uh, one that I've never wrestled and I would love to would be Charlotte Flair, of course. Uh, definitely Charlotte and Sasha Banks. And what are your thoughts on Ronda Rousey as a wrestler? I think she learned really, really fast. Like you can see right from the start, she's definitely an athlete. She she has the genes. She went in there and every match she was better. Like uh, I really like Ronda Rousey. I think she brought a lot of exposure to the women wrestling division. And um, I, I felt she was humble as well as to, to learn from the other girls. And like I said, every match I saw of her, she was getting better and better. And I, it's, it's sad that she stopped because I think she could have been like even better than she was when she left. I hear she's not probably not going to be at WrestleMania, but she might be back down the road from what I understand. So, and, What are your thoughts on all these MMA fighters getting into wrestling in general as someone that has worked their butt off since a teenager, been in the business 25 years, and you see these celebrities getting spots that in the past would have gone to wrestlers that were veterans like you? Well, I don't see as a bad thing, see it as a bad thing, especially when it comes to other athletes. Like, they've paid they do in the sport. They put on the efforts. They went to the gym. They, they might not have, like, done all the flips and the time in the indie, but... It, it's they they spend so much time in the gym or in the different ring or in the cage um so it's almost like a natural transition from a sport to another one so i don't see and they can bring so much more um t like technical stuff uh, i always love to see um uh, people like matt riddle the way he would transition from move to move like Matt Riddle is one great example of a guy that came from MMA that became like an awesome wrestler. Um, and I mean, there's others that I've, I've seen that it's just natural. Um, what's, what's really, uh, I wouldn't say hard to get, but I, I also get it why they would, if they grab someone that just had media attention and they train them, um, of course, it, it's all about getting attention from people, and I mean, whatever works. Uh, but it's for when it comes to MMA and all the other sports, like, yeah, I just think it brings something different. And I mean, Matt Riddle's the greatest example. He's he's so so good. What do you think of the controversy regarding him lately? Supposedly, some people say it's all a work, but he's been calling out Lesnar and. I guess Goldberg in the past supposedly Lesnar legitimately doesn't like it. Triple H apparently doesn't have a problem with it. What's your stance? Do you think it's a good idea on his part 
to keep calling Lesnar out? Or is that um, going to get him heat to prevent well, him from actually having the match? I, I wouldn't want to be on the bad side of Brock Lesnar. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> uh, I think Matt Riddle can hold his own against Lesnar. He's, he's really tough. I've seen him like uh, get like good beatings on the independence when I was doing shows with him. And he's really he has a lot of stamina. He, like he, he's, he's in great physical condition. Um, now, what do I think of it? I mean, I haven't been watching a lot of WWE. I'll be totally honest. I, I watch a lot of NWA. Um, I've, I've watched uh, all elite. I've been starting to watch more ROH now, but when it comes to WWE, I haven't followed everything. Um, like besides what I see on Twitter on day to day stuff. But I mean, I think it's good. It's probably good business because people are talking about it. Do you find it strange that they have PCO champion of ROH and they're actually not drawing that well in the U.S., but if they came to Montreal with PCO as champion, they would actually pack the place and it doesn't seem like they've made any effort to actually put on a show there because I find Quebec fans mm -hmm. really support their own and that would be a really cool show if it were to happen. I mean, PCO, if you know his story, like it's, it's, it's the comeback of a lifetime. We got this 52 year old guy who never gave up on his dream, who always have the passion. When you sit down with, with, with Carl and you listen to him talk about wrestling, you can feel how much he loves it. And definitely it would be great. I would love Ring of Honor to come here in Canada because they, I, I'm pretty sure they would pack the place of, People have so much respect for for uh, for PCO and what he's done and the comeback and he's he's going out there and killing it like so I, I really really hope they come because I, I think they would they would draw really good in here. Yes, and you're someone that they would probably throw on the card for sure if they if they came to the area, which would be cool for you. I really hope you do get your break in one of these companies that actually pay like and. From what Carl has told me, he's making in the six figures, which is pretty good it for is, not yeah. wrestling that much. So for someone like you to get a contract like that would be nice for all the work you've put in independent wrestlers. I know you get paid a decent amount. You're one of the top ones, but it's nothing near uh, what a salary would be in a company like AEW or a ring of honor. So I hope you get your chance. Is there any wrestler that you pattern yourself after? Um, probably, um, like when I, when I started, I was watching a lot of Japanese wrestling. So people like Bull Nakano, Akira Kudo. Um, I know we like when people mention his name, they're like, Oh, but Chris Benoit is someone I was really looking up to because the way he was hitting the way, like the being aggressive and the intensity was bringing in the ring. I always think it's been something that's been missing in women's wrestling. Like it's not intense enough. I like the screens. I like the, the uh, hard hitting. I like, I like when it looks like a, like a hard fight and I, I definitely took that from him and Japanese wrestling. Kento Kobashi so, is one. I used the burning hammer because of him. What's your finishing move? Yeah, the burning hammer. The I, burning I, hammer. I used the burning hammer, but also the Tiger Driver 91, which is like a, uh, a tiger like underhook, but more a little bit more on the, on the head. It's more, more devastating and scary. <laughs> so Jessica Black has her work cut out for her. She did say... She defeated you once in Quebec to win, I guess, the Femme Fatale Championship, mm -hmm. which is one of the top women's championships in Canada. But from what I understand, it was actually a three-way match. So while she technically won the match, mm -hmm. she never pinned you or anything. She, like um, she never pinned me. I was outside the ring. There was outside interference. The other wrestler, which is uh, Stacey Thibault, had uh, a male wrestler with her, Leon Saver, and I was busy with him when the pinfall happened in the ring so i was not even in the ring when that happened and what she forgets to say is that not only was i uh really respectful of her but i was a very good sportsmanship because i went in the ring and i actually put the belt around her waist the belt that i just lost i put it around her waist when she won so i don't know why she's being so disrespectful i don't know if she she I, like I know she comes back from an injury, and uh, as I said, when 
I address the situation. I'm, I've been there. I know how it feels. I know your, the uncertainty it brings. And I don't know if it makes her feel so good to pretend that she did beat me when she did not. But yeah, I had a lot of respect for her back then. And I showed her that by putting the title around her waist. So, well, things might be, well, will be different this Saturday because she don't care. I don't care. And one of the reasons I think that her attitude might have changed is she does date Jeremy Prophet, so <laughs> maybe some of his attitude is rubbed off on her. Oh, well. <laughs> well, time, time for her to get a lesson then. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to that match for sure. I've been wanting to see you in Great North Wrestling for a long time. Is there anywhere where fans can follow you if they want to search you up on social media? Sure, I have my own website, lufisto.com, at lufisto on Twitter, wounded at lufisto on Instagram, and facebook.com slash lufisto on Facebook. Well, thanks a lot for checking in with us. We look forward to seeing you in action. First time ever in Smith Falls, actually, yes. I think. Yeah. So the, the Smith Falls fans should come out and see this rare appearance of lufisto there. One last question. Yes. Where did you get the name lufisto? Lufisto comes from, uh, I used to be known Lucifer, and when I went to Japan, there was like, oh, there's a Lucy there, and uh, we can't pronounce it right, and there was a different reason why I could not use the name, so I took the Lu from Luc uh, Lucifer, and Fisto com actually comes from Jedi Fisto from uh, Star Wars, because I'm a big Star Wars fan, so I just put the two names together to have something that... Um, uh, sounds strong and can be pronounced in any languages and that's how it happened and it's quite a different character than precious lucy was oh my god yeah. you were quite a uh heartbreaker back in those days <laughs> and very feminine and now you're like a still obviously very beautiful but you're like hardcore take no prisoners fight guys bleed it's crazy. So it's going to be cool to see you in action. To close this off, what do you have to say to Jessica Black? Jessica, you just never met someone like me. This title is coming around my waist. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.